What's up everyone, it's Mark, I hope you're keeping well. Today's video is a far more generalised topic compared to what I would normally do on my channel, but it's great to switch it up a little bit. So I'm going to share all my tips and tricks I've personally learnt over the years to give me the best possible gaming experience on PC, including a slight edge over your opponent in first person online shooters. Right now, compared to 12 months ago, it's a great time to build a PC. Buying a graphics card capable of driving a high refresh rate monitor at 1080p has never been so inexpensive, such as a GTX 1660 Ti. Moving up a notch, my personal recommendation for 1440p high refresh rate gaming would be at least a 2080, or if you can still get your hands on one, a 1080 Ti. And that's what I currently use, if not a 2060 or 2070, will get the job done. If you're lucky enough to own or are planning to get a high refresh rate gaming monitor, you will want your frames per second to match the amount of times that shiny new monitor can update. This is why a powerful graphics card is so important, then relying on G-Sync or FreeSync if the monitor has it to minimise screen tearing and stutters when your FPS drops. Every monitor has a native refresh rate and running your FPS lower than that will make your game not appear quite as smooth as it should be. Let's go into detail on how I set up a monitor and PC for the ultimate try hard setup when playing online. First of all I better let you know about my monitor. This is the xg 3240 c from ViewSonic costing £444 in the UK and the US please check because I'm getting some extremely high prices. Needless to say, this video is relevant to any monitor regardless. This ViewSonic panel is VA, and for a straight up competitive gaming monitor, it wouldn't exactly be my preferred choice due to the fact it has slower response times compared to a TN or IPS, resulting in a slightly blurry image when frantically panning around in game. And you'll notice it more in faster paced games. That's not to say it's bad on this particular monitor, far from it, as there's a newer VA technology in side that reduces ghosting dramatically. It's still not on the level of a trusty TN but it's far more acceptable for competitive gaming. That's the only negative point I have to say about this monitor. At £144 you've got to expect some drawbacks, or one in this case. The rest, considering the asking price, is all positive. Anyway, let's talk about the ideal screen size. The XG3240C is a 32 inch monitor, and I was expecting a blurry image at 2560 by 1440. In my opinion, it's perfectly acceptable at 94 ppi. I've used 27 inch 1440p screens for years, and I can notice a slight drop in the pixels per inch, but it's the only alternative, in my opinion, right now for a big screen, apart from an ultra wide, of course. 4K 144Hz is too far away and very demanding right now. It all depends on how far you have your monitor away from your face, and I haven't got a lot of room at the moment, but when I set this monitor up correctly, e.g. a lot further back, I doubt I'll notice any difference in the pixels per inch compared to my 27 inch displays. I actually find the bigger screen easier to see enemies and opponents from a distance, plus it gives an overall more immersive experience, especially with the monitor's subtle curvature that wraps around you. I've been testing out this monitor's HDR capabilities and as you'd expect I can't see any benefits in a competitive environment. This panel doesn't quite have enough contrast to deliver a true HDR experience like any OLED as you'd expect at this price, nevertheless it's a great feature to have on this monitor. With a 2500 to 1 contrast, the experience is way better than most other monitors and cheaper TVs on the market right now. Moving on to my PC, you don't really need to know much apart from the fact it has an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti in two-way SLI, an Intel i7-8700K and the PC is connected via single display port 2.1. The name of the game here is to pair your gear up equally so the graphics card can deliver enough FPS to the monitor and also you have a decent CPU so you get as little of a bottleneck as possible. Now if we jump onto my computer, the first piece of software I'd recommend you download is MSI Afterburner. Once you install it, you will also be prompted to install RiverTuner. Now this isn't spam, please install this as well. 
Once MSI Afterburner is installed and set up, I'd highly recommend you use this to overclock your GPU. And since we're going to need every single frame possible, overclocking your CPU via the BIOS as well. There's plenty of guides for this on your particular CPU online. Now you've done that, let's set up MSI Afterburner to show some basic on-screen stats while you're playing. Simply click on the settings button on MSI Afterburner, go to the monitoring tab, highlight FPS or frame rate and tick down below where it says show in on-screen display. Next of all do the same for CPU temperature, CPU usage, GPU temperature, core clock and if you want you can even monitor your lowest FPS, click apply and you're done. To cap your FPS on the Windows taskbar, right click the Reva Tuner icon and click show. On the frame rate limit section, cap your FPS to around 4 frames below your monitor's refresh rate, in my case 141. This will make your games run the smoothest they possibly can. And if your game has a frame rate limiter, use that instead as this does cause an ever so slight bit of delay. Nowadays I just run my FPS completely unlocked and deal with a slight screen tearing, as it doesn't bother me. Plus, the higher the frames per second, the less delay you will have. But for anyone starting out in PC gaming, I recommend capping the FPS as it will give you the smoothest gameplay possible. You can also try forcing on V-Sync in the NVIDIA control panel. Only if you have a G-Sync panel, otherwise you will get a lot of input lag. Those with G-Sync displays will be fine because V-Sync, while well, most elements, won't come on until your FPS goes above your monitor's refresh rate. Hence why I recommend capping it with Reva Tuner at 141. This will give you the lowest input lag possible. While G-Sync is working 100% correctly, G-Sync does require a small part or parts of V-Sync to be turned turned on to work correctly, and if you have a G-Sync monitor but are running any game you play at with an FPS over your monitor's refresh rate, you're gaming with no G-Sync on at all. I guess what would be best is if you run V-Sync forced on and 144 FPS cap for single player games and just unlock the FPS completely for competitive games. That said I've been told a lot of people I've played with find the screen tearing extremely distracting and it throws off their aim in game and G-Sync with a capped FPS really helps them play better. This is probably due to a more consistent FPS with a steady level of input lag that might be better than an unlocked FPS that constantly fluctuates up and down during big FPS drops that always happens during heavy firefights such as when grenades go off and if your input lag is going up and down all the time it can throw off your aim. Jumping into some in-game settings, this method will reign true in all games but today we're going to use Battlefield 5 as an example. If you love graphics to be as high as possible, this probably isn't going to be the guide for you and it might seem quite ironic considering how much gaming can cost, especially on PC. The idea is to run most of your graphical settings on low, bear with me. Playing at 144fps on a 144hz monitor is an absolute joy to behold and it allows me to aim slightly better due to the fact that panning is so smooth. The XG3240C is allowing for 144 frames to be shown on screen per second and trust me the human eye can detect way more than 24 FPS. Films or TV programs for an example don't pan around frantically like when you're playing an FPS shooter so it's not a problem when you're watching films or TV. Either way back to the in-game settings the only way to hit 144 FPS even at 1440p on the latest most demanding games is to lower most of your in-game settings. Those who say a 1080 Ti or a 2080 Ti even is only for 4K gaming is straight up lying. 1440p 144Hz gaming is extremely demanding on any system. Unfortunately sacrifices have to be made to hit 144fps and that's in-game graphical settings. But wait, that's not the only reason to lower your in-game settings. Love those detailed textures? Well, they help hide an enemy. About to move into a building only to find a camper kill you that you couldn't see on screen? That's those pesky shadows on Ultra. Generally I will cut off every graphical setting regardless of my FPS for this reason, apart from AA or anti-aliasing, although that depends on the type. Jaggies can not only be an eyesore, but they can also make it harder to see enemies off into the 
distance. Battle Royales are a good example of this. If another player is stood next to a jaggy pipe or fence, they can be hard to spot. Also, leave any settings on that allow you to see further on into the distance. Effects detail will mask players in smoke or debris from grenades. Putting your settings on low will make you become the ultimate try-hard. Moving back to the ViewSonic XG 3240C, it has a lot of options where you can adjust the black level, bringing up any shadows in-game, helping you see any campers hiding in dark corners. There's also response time settings that should be set to their highest, but beware some monitors may make certain items overshoot. Overall, I'm absolutely loving this monitor. I know a lot of people prefer a much smaller screen size, then they can see everything that's going on on screen without having to move their head. With that said, most people can't worry too much because ultrawides are extremely popular right now. Personally, at the current asking price, I can highly recommend the ViewSonic XG 3240C. It's a 32-inch 1440p G-Sync capable monitor for £144. What's not to like? about that. Anyway, I hope this video may have helped someone out in setting up their gaming PC for competitive and casual gaming alike. If you need any help regarding any of this in this video, drop a comment down below. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. I shall see you all really soon. Goodbye.